Jeanette is owned and copyrighted by Jeanette, Company Gallery, and Company Media. All rights reserved. Hi, I'm Jeanette. This is my show. And today I'm talking to a good friend, the artist and filmmaker, Ben Solomon. Hi, Ben. Great intro. Thank you. Very strong. Thank I did you. make it shorter. Huh? You did, yeah, yeah. a lot shorter. Wow. Okay, so my idea for the interview... Okay, that we're doing. That we're doing right now. now okay. ...was to start with... Your involvement with Iraq, okay, the seminal New York graffiti crew, okay, of the late '90s, post 9/11 New York downtown scene, and then go into your development as filmmaker artist. I think that it's important that the groundwork is that you were already involved as a youth in something that had such great cultural impact, even though you probably didn't know, and now it's like past it, and it's probably something of baggage because you're so deeply involved. But I think it's important <laughs> for the people to understand that that was the groundwork. Okay. Right? Well, you answered all of it in your in your <laughs> setting it up, so I, I'm good. Okay, okay, next question. Okay, so next question. Um, uh, I grew up in New York City in, yeah. in Lower Manhattan and was sort of like early exposed to... All right, never mind. Scrap that. Don't put this in. Don't put that part in. Um, Growing up in New York City, exposure to graffiti is not really a choice, like especially in the 80s and, and early 90s. That's what's cool about graffiti. Like you don't have to uh, choose to go see it in a gallery. Yeah. Uh, you have to look at it. So by the time that I was like a teenager, graffiti and um, the other pursuits that come with it were sort of like my primary uh, interest. It, it, it definitely was an extension of my like initial like drawing comic books and like wanting to you know like it gave me something that where i could i could draw i could know about something that other people didn't know about i could yeah. learn about something but i could like engage in it it wasn't like that. yeah so i like the know about something that other people don't know about i think that that's yes i think even as a kid moving I, forward I, yeah. I think even as a kid that was my uh yeah. my uh yeah. lofty aspirations sometimes it does feel good to be able to read things on a wall that most other people can't read yeah and it, it's beyond just the i mean it's beyond just the actual like literal understanding of like a graffiti yeah letters and style and whatever and and what's good and what's toy and whatever but also it's an entire world that yeah. you know you, your regular person is not privy to yeah. and that's yeah a way yeah as a youth to set yourself apart which so this is the groundwork you have this involvement in this graffiti crew that is well i didn't even get to that i was just talking about graffiti. oh you do you want to <laughs> go into it yeah i mean I, I you know that group of people came together just in the way i think any group of teenagers basically comes together where like you're like out on your own quote unquote for the first time and have the opportunity to finally like make your own world and make your own whatever family and make your you know make your own universe really and it's like you know i would say like oh you filter the bullshit but there's like a lot of bullshit yeah. I involved yeah. um and especially you know like teenagers are not the most discerning no i think that iraq is a unique thing in a lot of ways but also the few times i do do interviews, I guess, or talk about it. I think it's also important to point out that like, it's not as unique as maybe like the, 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 the lore, like lets it yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, there was groups of kids that were, you know, diverse economically and straight and gay and white and black and Dominican. And all. there was like big groups of kids and people creating and living and rocking and being together. Like, in a million different forms before Iraq. I think Kunle, Irsnot, Kunle Martins being like openly gay in the 90s as a graffiti writer, as like a dude hanging out, as a kid hanging out, really that was something that was new. Yeah. And I think as a result of like his personality and impact and just like 
legend and shit that he was doing again not as like an act or as a character or as like a plan to an art career and yeah, just, like, yeah. he was just like i'm just this dude i think that was kind of like what was i guess groundbreaking and then i think as a result of that people gravitated to yeah. it it wasn't like a cookie cutter like oh this is a graffiti yeah. crew this is what it looks like whatever and there was a lot of photographers and yeah. there was a lot of photos and there was also like the medium of photography was changing and there was yeah. like you know, we were documenting what we were doing and there was other people doing the same shit and other people had done it before. But I like to just say, and I don't know that anyone else in the crew would or wouldn't agree with me, but it doesn't matter because I'm the one talking here. <laughs> like, I think there is uh, X amount of like luck and like right place or like wrong place, right time yeah. type of scenario yes. where like, you know. No, it was a conflation of right place, right time. I mean, even when you talk about it moving into the like the music and the art world and the fashion, like Iraq is a part of all of that downtown scene that burgeoned and became something that was much more influential. No, it wasn't just Iraq, but that sort of gave way. Like if you talk about, like you're saying, the photography, the documenting of everything and how that quickly found its way into an art scene that then became you know, part of art history. So you could link it back to where photography had been and then really quickly follow the course to where it went. So it became yeah. a bigger part of culture. Yeah, yeah, a, a hundred percent. And I think also that, you know, there's like a cycle of like, New York's dead, everything in New York sucks. Yeah. It, I think it used to happen every like eight years. Now it happens every like six months or something. Yeah. So whatever the thing is that people can find that like gives them like either people in New York faith that like New York isn't yeah. totally dead yeah. or people outside of New York, the idea that like New York's the same as it always was. Yeah. It's this like people you know, gravitate towards yeah. that. And I think like for our era, we became that in a lot of yeah. ways. And then it, you know, splintered out and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. tentacled out into yeah, this other, completely. you know. That's a good place to then ask, why did you go to Boston for film school? Because I didn't get into NYU. <gasps> Easy, done. And, um, but that in a weird way was like a blessing, I guess, because, you know, I don't, well, I don't know if it was a blessing or not, but I don't think that I would have finished. Like, I think if I did go to school in the oh, city, yeah, yeah, I yeah. would have done a semester and then be like, oh, well, why am I even doing this anyway? Yes. But this was, that was also like back when the Chinatown bus was like a van, uh, which I'm with sure you were like, yeah, exactly. With chicken. And <laughs> yes. it was like eight bucks yeah. or like five if it yeah. was after 10 it was PM. Five. Exactly. So like after my first <sighs> semester of college and when I could like make a schedule, I was just like, cool. I go to class like Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday. And I was basically just like, yeah here and there and, yeah you know yeah that was disgusting those bus trips yes and also boston, boston <laughs> yeah. is you know not, yeah but that's where i met you that's true at emerson i've known jeanette a very long time Spe put the special effects on this genius um genius 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 <laughs> genius oh that's on him god damn it that's what, well i did like you gotta you did it but you I, gotta get you know it. you have to get like pro at this no, I just smile at it and say genius. Yeah, perfect. So yeah. you're a pro. I'm a pro. You're a genius. I'm a genius. But that's where we met. I met you at Emerson. I had just moved back to America from Switzerland. I had spent a long time in Switzerland. I didn't know much about Americans, though I thought I did, but I didn't. And you were the face of New York to me. I was like, that is New York. Well, so that's because we were in Boston. In Boston, I think in yeah. New York, they're like, oh, yeah. that other no, guy. Exactly, exactly. But, right, yeah, okay, I'll like, take it. There goes New York. Okay, <laughs> so, I'll take okay, it. Okay, so you went to film school in Boston simply because... I what think was, being a uh, uh, geriatric millennial, I feel like that's another thing. It's like, you know, we were like the last generation where it was like, if you go, if you do this and then you go to college and then, I mean, I went to film school, I didn't go to school to, yeah. like, to make to yeah. do something where it was like, you know, you're yeah. going to make money, but yeah. whatever the idea was like, if you go to college and you put, you know, you're, you know, like that little sick boomer yeah. fantasy that yeah. worked for everyone yeah. that's like older than us. Yeah. At, right before I left, actually, I have a vivid memory of two of my close friends, you know, a couple days before I left and they were like, why, why are you leaving? And I was like, what? I'm going to school. What are you talking about? Like, and they're like, nah, that's, that's fucking whack. Oh my God. And it was like, you know, which is like, I could imagine Oops. now, be, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. So what did you want to do with film school? Like, did you go in wanting to make art films, film films, documentaries? I was interested in 
the arts and making stuff like predating graffiti and 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 predating you know also photography. My dad was a poet. My mom was a photographer. Really? really? So you had all this art in your childhood. You were exposed to a lot of that kind of thinking. Yeah, a hundred percent, and also just by That's virtue. Incredible. Yeah, I, I'm extremely blessed, and very, I think that is That's a amazing. huge yeah. part of like why I turned out the way I did, like yeah. like good and bad, because yeah. I think that's yeah. some, yeah. you know, like I feel like I yes. could have and would have like made and saved more money and plan <laughs> things differently if I wasn't like I have to make the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that's also like what I value. And that's, yeah. that definitely is where it came from. Filmmaking is a really collaborative uh, yeah. art form. Like if you make yes. paintings, like sure, when you're like doing it big, you got an assistant or whatever, you got this yeah. and that, but it's like, for the most part, it's like you yeah. in a studio alone. I think filmmaking came about, re so also like my, my oldest friend, who's like to this day is still like super close to me, Dan Levin. He comes from a family of filmmakers. Like he's the third generation filmmaker. His dad and his grandfather are like legendary New York City documentary guys. Okay. And that was attractive to me and my group of friends where we were like, oh, we can't really like make a lot of other stuff together, but this is something we can explore. And, you know, and so that was sort of part of what drew me to it. And yeah, I mean, that that's a big part of it, I think. And then... You collaborated with Dan Levin on your, was that your first? Mm. Which one? Film captured? Oh yeah, basically our senior year in high school, they treated it like senior thesis vibes. And they were like, you can do whatever you want. We made a film for our like senior year. Yeah. Um, and so I guess technically that's- what That's what you count as your first Whoa, film? Shit, sorry. It's a good thing it's not actual coffee. Go on. What can we see here? Can we see the mess that he just made? Oh my God. Go on. I spilled like this much water. <laughs> Captured is uh, essentially the history of the Lower East Side from about 1979 to at that time, 2007, told through the story, relationship, and work of this artist couple, Clayton Patterson and Elsa Rensa. Um, they're originally from Alberta, Canada. They came to New York 78, 79. They bounced around a little bit. They ended up settling. Uh, on the Lower East Side. Uh, they were both incredible painters. They both are incredible painters, sculptors. Uh, in, they, they made clothing, uh, did many different things. And again, going, I mean, I think especially as a filmmaker, a photographer, those being mediums I work in a lot, technology always plays a part in these things. So again, like the camera and the evolution of cheaper, faster, photo and then video technology like played a part in their story. The camera became like this very important connective tissue for them in New York City, where Clayton sort of began to weave through all of these really important scenes, like, you know, the early 80s drag scene, the New York hardcore scene, like some real deal, like street Lower East Side, like gang and drug shit, where like, you know, I mean, it was the 80s in New York. So they're like, oh, this fucking, these, Crazy people, not that they're crazy, but you know what I'm saying. Like, Kooks. <laughs> canceled. Um, <laughs> captured is my one feature film. It's, it's, it's. Do you, you want to make more? Yeah, I definitely want to and will. And then, you know, always sort of on track towards like making another actual feature doc, but. Like a know. documentary. Yeah. Well, I'd like to make some stuff besides the documentary, yeah. but you know, that's. Yeah. One of the things that stood out to me in the film, well, there was a bunch of things. He was talking about how he needed to make money in order to keep doing what he was doing, which is like what the artist has to do. Yeah. And that the way that he thought to accomplish that was by making these hats. So it was this incredibly like creative thing that enabled him to keep making creative things. And it's this this like weird place that artists sort of live where they, you have to try to make money. So you have to go out there and do something and it's not always creative, right? And I'm thinking like about you and your commercial films and the films that you wanna make and the art you wanna make and how like the commercial work that you do sustains you financially, but it's yeah. not necessarily, it's creative, but it's not necessarily what you want to put out in the world creatively. Yeah, well, I would say two things. One, I mean, certainly in the 70s and prior, but 
definitely in the 80s and even early 90s as well, the things like working artists had to do to like yeah. survive, yeah. like, you know, seem yeah. uh, ideal compared yeah. to now. Because, yeah. you know, you now can... it's like I run a hedge. Fo- a hedge yeah. Fund, like so I made a I joke. Paint. Yeah. I made a joke <laughs> yeah. to Ned the other day. I was yeah. like, Jenna should work at the crystal store yeah, and I'll work exactly. at the like the Magic the Gathering yeah. place. And he was like, oh, it's crazy. Back in the day, you could like sustain uh, like as a married couple. Yeah. Absolutely. doing that and, and now it's like oh cool buy a like, home yeah and so make art yes. you know no, bor- born anymore. at the born at the wrong time <laughs> yeah um but and i would also say uh you know i've always found a way to make my ideas or my skills or my creative talents pay the bills yeah. one way or the other and you know in doing yeah. that especially for you know a while now uh, you know, I've learned to sort to accept the pros and cons and realities of like what that means, right? Where like sometimes I make something and I'm like every single piece of it down to like, you know, the way this one light book, whatever, like is is me and I get to have that and own it and whatever. And then, you know, you do projects where you're like, yeah, whatever you want. Like, yeah. let's get it done. You know, yeah. send, send the check. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and not to say that no matter what, I think uh, I've been able to inject like uh, your own voice. Yeah. And by, by, by caring a lot about what I do, even if it's not like my passion project yeah. or like the coolest idea I ever got like involved yeah. in. Like, you know, I think that helps me keep the quality high and also keep my like energy moving forward. Whereas like, you know, especially with any sort of commercial art, but especially in like as a director and on the filmmaking side, like, you know, commercial work can be a crazy grind and it can also be like really lucrative, but it can you can just go like zombie mode where you're just like, cool, just like do it, do it, do it. And like. You know, I'd like to have like two zombie mode years. Maybe I could like, you know, buy a fucking house or something. Yeah, exactly. But like whatever, I, I have been able to make a living and be fulfilled in the work I do and in the amount of time I get to spend, you know, in my own life, whether that's like making my own work or just like just chilling. Yeah. Uh, which is also very important. Hanging out, uh, the most important thing in life. Chilling. Genius. Genius. Um, so, you know, that... Uh, I think that answers the question. Yeah. Well, you forgot the what question? you yeah, so. What was the question? So another thing I've found as a artist who primarily makes commercial work is like, I have this gentle like thing to be like, well, it's not really mine. Like I came up with the idea and I like did all the shit yeah. and I hired all the people and I like had the final cut yeah, yeah, and I chose yeah, the music yeah. and I did the color session and whatever, but like, you know, it's yeah. for them or yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. whatever. Whereas like you can't, someone looks at your painting and they're like, what the fuck is this? You know, <laughs> you can't be like, oh, well, like the gallery wanted me to use like more orange and then like they wanted, you know, photorealistic because so, it's easier to, well, you, some artists can say that, but like, you know, you know what I'm saying? What like, you're it's saying just you. is you're talking about fear. Oh yeah, a lot yeah, of it. I got a, a lot, lot of, of fear. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got to get through that. Yeah, well, that's, that's how you. Yeah, that's how you. That's what they you say. You gotta pretend that it's just for yourself. That's, that's what, what they, they say. say. <laughs> um, but uh, but the thing that I have found about art is that you can pretend all you want that it's just for yourself, and the most lay person can walk in and look at your art and see you clearly, and it's terrifying. Right. Yeah. So. So I'll be making commercials after this interview. I'll be making commercials for another keep ten going, years. Keep going. No, but I'm saying like I, I'm aware of that, and I do make stuff, and I slowly am sort of finding how and where I would want to share it with the world, or even share it with yeah. my peers, and not even the world yet. Yeah. But like, how would you do that? Okay, I just saw the Nan Golden documentary. Still haven't watched it. And sorry, <laughs> apology. And she talks about how she's taking all the photos of. Uh, you know, community and everything and friends. And, and then she um, was doing slideshows and her friends were watching the slideshows and they were, you know, some, of you know, giving her a lot of feedback and then she'd altered the slideshows. So how would you show them to your, show your work to your peers? I text Ned a lot. Oh yeah, there you I text go. I Ned a lot. Ned is my chats. husband. Shout out to Ned. Genius. He's a genius. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that the, the advantage I have, right, is that I'm already a part of a community and a conversation where, like, I have peers 
that I respect that like would take the time to look at anything I showed them, yeah. which I think a lot of people don't have. And yeah. that's like a great yeah. advantage and to be able to trust, even if I don't necessarily agree with yeah. everyone I know is like aesthetics or practice or work or whatever, but like having a range of, yeah. you know, walls to bounce things off of. I have so much stuff that like I've never, not only have I not like shown to other people, but I've never like put it together yeah. and thought yeah, about yeah, like, yeah. What is like, what is this like, first, even just understanding or something like, oh, this is like a body of work. And yeah. then thinking about like, what does it say? What does it hold within it? What And then and then also understanding like, cool, if I can get my vision or version or whatever, like slice of clarity I can get in that, like, and put it to someone else it's like whatever they're going to take out of it that's not really my yeah. business and that's yes. not really my concern at that point yeah and you know i think that's the one thing where it's like you know i have plenty of fear as you pointed out so gracefully <laughs> um that's what I'm here for. but at the same time like i think there's a value in holding back and like being discerning with what and yes. how things are out there. Like, I'm glad that all, yeah. you know, like I very much like value, like all the things I said no to, yes. even to myself, but yes. mostly to other people. Um, <laughs> because like, I still have all that stuff. And now it's like, I have the opportunity to yeah. like, take the next step with it instead of, you know, instead yeah. of being like, Oh, like, all those shitty zines I made when I was yeah. like 23. And now I have to like, you can edit them. be like, don't, 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 Don't remember that. Them. Like, look at this now. But when we're looking back at your life later, perhaps when you're departed, uh, we can go through all your zines without your editing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Totally. That's the in vitrines and museums and such. Totally. Right. And I think, and I think also a little bit what you were saying about Clayton, it also relates to graffiti, maybe. And something I would say is that, you know, uh, making things as a creative person, as an artist, just as me is part of who I am no matter what, right? That's what I was saying. It predated me, yeah. you know, almost even talking yeah. and it's evolved yeah. and devolved and morphed in different yeah. communities and mediums and partners and solo and whatever and all yeah. this shit. And it's like I, the, the validation or like definition doesn't come from me being like, well, I showed here and I showed here yeah, and I'm in yeah, yeah, this yeah, collection yeah. or I did yeah. this version. And it's like, yeah, whatever. The majority of my stuff has been yeah. in a commercial yeah, lens that yeah, I've yeah. put out there, but it doesn't make it any less or any more. You were also your group of friends <laughs> they, I, going back to Iraq. Right. When the art world decided that they were what they wanted to devour right well i shouldn't they have gotten to film school put everything out <laughs> i, I mean every last school. thing they did they put out there so you were probably yeah. you were able to see that and maybe be like oh, man it's not the best move yeah like, i mean no i think that dissing anybody just sometimes you can look at it and be like well, yeah i think that facet of the conversation is definitely interesting maybe we'll do that on that uh, season two part two but i think there is something to be said there where like you know a lot of making work in any format is about like really trying to find what you're saying and yeah. how you're saying it and and all of that stuff and it's like when you have the ability to like do it at your own pace yeah you kind of have an advantage like yeah. uh, like even younger artists i know today who are like oh i'm like i'm hot like i gotta do this yeah, shit i gotta yeah, and then you're like oh you're yeah. like cranking out like yeah. which is sick like if you yeah. can crank out a show and be like it's sold out and yeah. i'm paid like that's that's yeah. dope and yeah. definitely like not you know like i'm an old millennial i'm not like gen x so i'm yeah. not on like can't sell out you gotta be poor like as soon as you're not poor no, like you, as yeah. soon as you're not poor sell you're out, a failure sell out, sell out you're fine um but <laughs> since we're here right. and we do have to start wrapping it up okay i can talk what do you think of my work? Uh, I am a fan. I would like to, with a lot of my friends, study it more and experience it more. I think my exposure to your work is fairly limited. I also have a thing with my friends, maybe as a little PTSD from when a certain <laughs> section of my friends like really yes. blew up of being like, I don't really want to like <laughs> yeah. know too much because I don't really want to have opinions. I just want to yeah. like love you and yeah. be excited for yeah. you and be like, I was at the opening, didn't really like get to look around. And da, 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 look da, da. But yeah. um, so I don't know if I successfully dodged that question or not. 
I think you did a good job. Okay. I think he did a good job. Okay. Genius. Genius. Uh, so that that's it. That wraps it up. How did I end it last time? What did I say? That's it. Cut. Bye. I went to like, you know, downtown, like alternative, you know, kook school. Um, shout out to them. Um, Are we allowed to say kook? Is kook a canceled word? I have no idea. No, kook is like some like surfer makes bullshit. Makes me so nervous. No, oh, you like can surfer? say kook. I mean, I would never, I wouldn't say I'm a surfer lingo guy, but like, yeah. Okay. You can say kook. Like kook. what? I can't say whack? Like I can't, what, what? Is it the same? Does whack have an H? There's no H in it. All right, go on. Uh, <laughs> if, if I say something that gets me canceled, it's not on you. <laughs> but I can say kook. I will say something we that gets me canceled, that but out. it's not going to be kook.